Hallelujah. Good morning to you. Listen, bienvenidos todos personas. Guten Tag. Año aseo. Uh, in Ghana, machi, sin chao. Uh, listen, we say God bless you and good morning to you. Uh, we thank God for everyone being on this call. Here we are again, the International Church of God by Faith. We've gathered together for this uh, 102nd General Assembly, 10 days of prayer and consecration. That's what we are doing. This is our 10th day of 10 days of prayer and consecration for this 102nd General Assembly, the true light coming out of John chapter 1 with emphasis on verse 9 and 10. And so once again, for your host team of Elder Michael Stevenson and myself, Minister Cornelius Dudmore, Stark Church of God by Faith, Gainesville District, under the leadership of none other than presiding Bishop James McKnight, Jr., we thank God for our district elder in the person of Dwayne Ganey, Gainesville District. But as you've heard me say, there's no one district greater than another. And so we thank God for each and every one that's gathered here. Uh, John chapter 1, I'll, be, I'll pick it up in verse 6. Uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. Lord of mercy, that's what we need. That's what Atlanta needs is real witnesses to show up. Their, sa their same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That's Christ. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And so we thank God that around that rallying cry that has been downloaded into our presiding bishop and executive council, we are gathering here, many boots on the ground here already in Atlanta here on Thursday, December the 14th, going all the way through the 17th. And so I'm elated because on this 10th day of 10 days of prayer, I said this before, there's really about 12 days of prayer because um, we have 6.30 prayer Friday morning in the ballroom and then 6.30 prayer Saturday morning in the ballroom also. So, and that would be day 11 and 12. Glory to God. But listen, precious people, on this 10th day of prayer, I'm thankful because we're joined uh, by a sincere, uh, a passionate uh, leader of prayer. And I'm talking about none other than Deacon Billy Joe Millings, uh, Central Georgia District. And so, but before we receive uh, Deke, before we receive him, you know, the scriptures are clear. We should be thanking God for this incredible 102nd General Assembly. I'm thanking God, as I said, for the things that he has already brought us through, uh, bus situations and travel and airports and um, Uber and uh, Lyft vehicle and ride shares. I thank God for all some of the things that we've experienced already, harrowing. I thank God for all of the uh, financial challenges and different things um, that we overcame to just get in position to be able to be in this place. But we also have a 10th leper spirit, like that 10th leper in Luke chapter 17, where there were 10 lepers that were cleansed, but only one of them had the wherewithal to turn around and go back and fall down in front of Jesus and worship him. And Jesus did ask this question. He said, were there not 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Glory to God. And so only one came back to worship him, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus told him that his faith had made him whole. Glory to God. And so we don't want to miss any part of God. We want to thank God in advance. So not just what God has brought us through, but we can thank God prophetically in advance for the incredible miracle of preaching. We can thank God for how he will heal and pour out his spirit if we will let him do it. We can thank God for what he's going to do. We can thank God for who he is and what he's about and with all the things that he's going to allow to happen and take place. And so we can thank God for that in advance. And so um, the scripture says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and you've heard this before, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. First Thessalonians 5 and 18. Glory to God. And so we want to now just position our hearts. We want to position our minds, our ephods are on. And let's go ahead and receive Deacon Billy Joe Millings as he takes us forward and as we join him, not spectators, but participators. Let's join him and raise a chorus of thanksgiving over this 102nd General Assembly. Eternal God, our Father in heaven. Lord, we come before you once again, as we have so many times before, to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we are praying this morning, giving thanksgiving to the International Church of God by faith, 102. Oh, God, assembly, God. Over a century, this church has been together. How our forefathers labeled, God. Our vote bishops, 
Oh, beginning even with Aaron, Bishop Aaron Matthews, how he propelled this organization, God, all the way until W.W. W. Matthews, Father. Oh, all the way until Senior Bishop Mike Knight. Even right now, the one that is holding up the bound now, Bishop Mike Knight Jr. God, we thank him for him, Almighty God. How they have helped him, their lives, God. They have, how they have blazed the trail, Father, for the church of God by faith. Even before the name came into existence, God, it was said that they were shut up in a room and didn't come out until God gave them the answer of what this church name should be. That's why we are standing on faith, God. Hebrew 11 and 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence is a thing not seen. Oh, God, that they've seen so many things down through the years. Over a century years, oh, God, and this church has never come to a spit. God, we thank you for that. Many times, God, we ask you for something, but right now, we just want to thank you, God, for life, health, and strength. Thank you for another day, God. Thank you for safe traveling and able to make it to this assembly, Father. We pray for the ones that are on the way, that are airways, the highways, oh God, in the railways. God bless them. Grant them travel and mercy, God. As we come and assemble ourselves together, Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Oh, it said, it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Avon beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. It has to do a harmony. As they do, they descend upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing forevermore. God, we thank you where you brought us from. God, we continue standing on your word, trusting in your name, O oh God. We thank our bishop, O oh my God, and this staff, God, the Supreme Council, how they'll propel this church, O oh God, reach out, God, and brought different things into it. How they develop, O oh God, discover and expand it, the transformation of church. The Generation Dreamers, the Church Benefit Service, oh God, even 2025 20, Partnership. God, they have had a vision. God, help us to stand behind them. Help us to put our shoulder to the wheel and support it. The financial solution, oh God, help us to stand on your word, almighty Father. We come this far by faith, leaning on you and trusting in your holy name. God, we realize you didn't bring us this far just to leave us. Oh, just in Joel, Joel, Joel. And 2 and 15 through 19, told them to blow your trumpets, sound them loud, sanctify the people, call them something together. And that's what we are doing now, have called the people to come together now and sanctify the congregation. They told them to assemble the elders as they come together. Get of the children, the one that even suck in the breath. The bridegroom will come forward out of the chamber. Oh, and out of the closet. And say, let the priest and the minister of the Lord weep between the posts. God, we thank you for the people, that the God, you will not let thy heritage come to a real approach. The heathen should not rule over them. God, all this hazard, they've gone through our elders, our forefathers have gone through. You will not let this come to a reproach. Then you will say, Lord, this is a jealous Lord, this land, and pity his people. But yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will sanctify them. And I will not, no more, let you come to real approach. God, we know that you are with us, Almighty Father. We're standing on your word, God, trusting and believing in your holy name. Because you are the light, O oh, Father, that was in the world, that lighteth every man that come into the world. You was in the world, and the world was made by you, and the world knew you not. What a pity, God. Some people don't even know you now. Some people haven't even come to know you as that personal savior. But we pray that somebody will come into that assembly, God, and cry out, what must I do to be saved? God, that they will go back a different way, transform. Oh, Jesse said in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you by the mercy of God. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to your reasonable service. This is what God is calling for us to do. Help us to stand on the promises of God. God, we even pray in God that the international church, they will come from north, south, east, and west, even from the Hades, even from Chile, even from Africa, God. They'll assemble themselves together if they can't get here by virtual line. You too, that they will hear what thus says the Lord. As our Supreme Council have reached out and begged and asked God, what do they people need? And as we have come together and assemble ourselves to hear what thus says the Lord, that we will go back and be a better people on tomorrow. 
that we'll let somebody know that God is still in the healing, miracle working business. God still has some Abrahams around. God still has some Joseph's around. God help us, Almighty Father, as we launch out into the deep. God help us, O Father, to stand on your word continuously, Father. Let us lead with a desire, follow with a passion, obey with respect, that we may become better peoples of God. You are our God. We are your children. Besides you, there is none other. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will continue to pray, God. We continue to call out unto you, O God. This is First Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. And every very God of peace, sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, the whole spirit, soul, body, be preserved, blameless unto the coming of our Lord. Because faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Faithful is God. He cannot fail. He will not lie. He will not turn back. We will be blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God help us to have more love in our heart, more peace in our mind, more joy within our soul, God. Help us, God, that every room be anointed in this place. Everyone come through that door, God. We'll feel the presence of God. We want to know what is going on in this place. God, that your spirit, you will be in our midst. Because where you said there's two or three touching and agreeing, you will be in our midst. God, they're coming in from the north, south, east, and west. They're coming in, God. God, help us, almighty God, to stand on your word. Help us to cry loud and spare not. And show their people their transgression. God, somebody down in the valley trying to get home. Somebody, a child, or strayed away, need to come back home. God help us in this assembly. We will be seeing miracles perform in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we know you're God of all time. God, we even praying for Israel, your chosen folks, God, in a war-torn country, Ukraine. God, but you said that these things must be walls and rumors of walls, earthquakes and divers places. You said this is not the end, but it's the beginning of sorrow. You can come back any time and bust the cloud. Because you said, no man knows the day or the hour. So you come back like a thief at night. Help us, God, not to be getting ready, but help us to be ready. Standing on the promise of God. The lies are seen. The glory of the coming of the Lord. God, we thank you, Father. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Blessed is he that considered the poor. You said you would deliver them in time of trouble. God, somebody came here, need to deliver from depression. Somebody came here, need to deliver from thought of suicide. Somebody need to deliver us, Almighty God, with the heavy burdens on their shoulders, Almighty Father. Help us, O oh God. We don't know, but you know, as our leaders have been praying, oh God, and begging and seeking and asking you, pleading unto you what their people need. God, help us continue to lift them up in prayer, Father. Help us to let them know that we are behind them. We are praying with them. We are praying for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we realize can't any more happen to you alive, Father. You are God of God, King of King. Lord, you are our only true and living God. God, help us to show folks our praise and glory and honor unto you, Almighty Father. God, let this be one of the greatest assemblies that ever have been, Almighty oh God, as we push forward. God, as I said, over centuries, and this church has never come to a split. We're standing on your promises, God. You said, God, if we live right, heaven belongs to us, Almighty oh God. If we walk right, talk right, treat others right, God, we can't miss the kingdom, O oh Father. But we realize we got to get up, give, give self up. Because you said any man put his hand to the gospel plow and look back, he's not fitting for the kingdom, God. Help us not to look back. Help us not to turn back. Yeah. Help us not to go back. Yeah, you know. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we pray for love. Understand it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father.
Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The answer to the promises of God, they are yea and amen. They are yes and amen. They are so be it, God. Not according to my word, but according to your word. Be it unto according, be it unto us according to your word. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. That's the answer to the promises of God. Hallelujah. You did say, so shall my word be, which goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So your word is not coming back without getting it done. So we can say yes and amen. We cry, so be it. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. He did say in Hebrews, hallelujah, glory to God, that for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I want to thank God for Deacon Billy Joe Millings. I thank God that there are not many men, glory to God, there's not many men, they can uh, thank God and prophesy at the same time. Not how, you don't hear that a lot, glory to God. I thank God for, for you, Deacon. Uh, I thank God for passionate prayer. Man of God, thank God for what he has done. Glory to God. Thank God for who he is. Thanking God for his word and how his word has been um, integral and has been the foundation of this assembly, um, this international church of God by faith uh, from its inception. Glory to God. It's the word that is going to continue to carry us through uh, regardless of um, the earth splitting, Africa dividing in two, a new ocean being created, regardless of the polar ice caps melting, Israel and Hamas, glory to God, Russia, Ukraine, hallelujah, Ukraine is not the end of the road for Russia, glory to God, it's just the beginning, but regardless of all of that, as Deacon said, regardless of all of these things that Jesus has reminded us of and warned us about in Matthew 24, regardless of that, we will continue to stand on the word of God, everything is going down but the word of God. He said in Second Peter chapter 1, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. I thank God for this incredible 10 days of prayer. Again, don't, don't forget, there's still two more now, 11 and 12. That's uh, 6.30 prayer Friday morning and 6.30 prayer Saturday morning in the ballroom. Glory to God. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And not just the priests and the ministers. Glory to God. But I thank God that everybody was called, as Deke said, and called attention uh, back to Joel chapter 2 uh, and verse 15. Blowing the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. It's not just the ministers, uh, glory to God. He said, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breast. Let the bride go out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and give not your heritage the reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Glory to God. So we thank God for what he has done throughout these 10 days of prayer. Uh, I thank God for who he is. We thank God for the power uh, that he has already displayed. We do thank God for the miracle of preaching. We thank God for what he's going to do. I thank God for those who are going to allow the Lord during this 102nd General Assembly, those who are going to allow the Lord to use them as witnesses to take this true light outside of the ballroom, to take it beyond the ballroom and take it out here into the lobby, in the promenade, uh, in the underground area. Uh, folks are walking through these areas with spirits of suicide, um, uh, debilitated by drugs and alcohol. Um, folks are walking in this place in darkness, uh, in the Hyatt. They're coming in and out um, like ants and in and out of an ant pile. Uh, glory to God, bound with all sorts of debilitating sickness, disease, and spiritual um, uh, oppression. Glory to God. But I thank God because as Deacon Billy Joe Milling was praying, I realized something. Glory to God. There's, there's one thing that the true light needs. There's one thing that the true light needs, and that is a witness. The true light needs a witness. Check your Bible. John chapter 1, starting at verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness 
to bear witness of the light. I'm not talking about Jehovah Witnesses. I'm not talking about some crazy doctrine, Charles Taze Russell and this, that, and the other. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a true witness. I'm talking about the kind of witness he talked about in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me, glory to God, after that you've received the power and the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, glory to God. But he said that the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Glory to God. The light, the true light, needs a witness. Needs a witness. Glory to God. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. And so it was in Acts 1 and 8. Uh, it, there in the scripture where he did say to them, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and of the uttermost parts of the earth. The true light needs a witness to carry that light and let it shine and take it to the masses, take it to the underground, take it to the promenade, take it out there on the street in front of CVS, glory to God, take it in the restaurant while you're having breakfast in the morning, to take it in and everywhere, take it to the aquarium, wherever it is that we're going between services and this, that, and the other, take it to the restaurant, take it down the street, glory to God, take it to the SWAT championship, take it to FAMU, take it everywhere. That's what the true light needs is a true witness. So listen, we thank God on behalf of our prayer team, uh, our host team, Elder Michael Stevenson, uh, and myself, Minister Dunmore, Stark Church of God by Faith. We thank God for, first of all, our wives, glory to God, because without these incredible, wow uh, women, uh, these amazing women of the word, my wife, I thank God. When you see her, tell her thank you. Say, Lady Shanita, thank you, because without her, I wouldn't be doing any of this. And so glory to God. We thank God for our wives. We also uh, thank God for Deacon John McKnight. Glory to God. We thank God for uh, Lady Landers, Lady Murdis Landers. We thank God for you. Uh, Sister Gloria Thomas, uh, thank God for these incredible uh, women of God. And thank God for Deacon McKnight, who does more than so many others do. Glory to God. And so not a, a knock on anyone, but I just thank God for his work working through, the power of God working through him. And so listen, well, let's go forward. Let's be transformational. Let's make it what it has not been. If we do what they did, then precious people, we will see what they saw. We'll see you uh, at the start and the opening of this 102nd General Assembly today, December the 14th, this Thursday. We'll see you in the ballroom, glory to God. And we will also see you for day 11 and day 12 at 6.30 in the morning in the ballroom on Friday morning and 6.30 on Saturday morning. Listen, let's go forward. Let's open it up. Let's go all the way. Let's not be like Laodicea. Why come? It's too far to come. It's too much to travel to come and just be lukewarm. I wouldn't even come. If I'm going to come and just be lukewarm and be every day, let's not do it. Let's be hot, glory to God. Let's be full. Let's be all in. I close with Colossians 3 and 23. He said, whatsoever you do, including come to a 102nd General Assembly, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go forward in that way. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah, and glory to God.